oh, that uh, three act division or five act division i'm not very sure about how many acts i still spoke about i have read sitfield and all they are talking about three acts but they have taken it from all western theory of composition of storytelling composition has this um, act division which they have actually derived from aristotle so from that perspective what is this five act thing this is neither the five act nor the three act the five act is very uh, renaissance it's uh, this prologue rising action mm-hmm. climax falling action epilogue it's like a pyramid mm-hmm. greek plays are like an arrow it starts and it rushes without any subplot without any deviation it rushes to the end and that's why greek plays mostly most of the greek plays are like detective stories mm-hmm. they start and they absolutely like on as a horse race they pushes towards the end mm-hmm. now considering that greek play has all come from the dithyram and uh, there is this choric section mm. uh, so there is a narrative there is a dialogue sequence always in the greek play and then there is generally a choric ode which has three parts trophy and dystrophy and deport and then again another dialogue section and then there may be another ode so a dialogue section a ode a dialogue section a ode by the chorus and at times the chorus and uh, characters starts talking to each other mm-hmm. that can happen in the beginning of the play middle of the play towards the end of the play chorus can also be fragmented into parts generally there were 12 chorus 10 chorus and these 12 people will all become individual and they will start speaking themselves mm-hmm. like at the uh, death of agamemnon uh, they all uh, show the confusion of the common people Ki, uh, whether we should go inside no no we shouldn't go inside what is happening we must check and that kind of fragmentation of the choric voice the chorus leader and the choric voice that also that happens so. uh the three act structure most of the theoreticians try to uh, find out because there is a uh, rising action which leads to a kind of complex uh, unsolving uh, point and from there there is a resolution now the resolutions at many times are through doi makina later on theoreticians have said that whenever you cannot solve a plot mm-hmm. you use the doi makina okay that you have made the plot too complicated most of the hindi films are like mm-hmm. that hera peri fir hera peri mala mal weekly all those journal films they make a very nice complicated plot but then it cannot be solved so solved so a monkey gone. comes and monkey takes the diamond away and the diamond falls into a cart and then it runs away <laughs> and then it eventually falls into heroine's uh, lap and the hero falls from the tree and it happens some kind of boy monkey na happens most of the narratives even many of the very very established filmmakers and uh, novel writers story writers they have often dependent on uh, doi makina like tigor uh, in aankhon ki kirkiri mm-hmm. jo khel wali mm-hmm. most of the shakespeare shakespeare's particularly the comedies they all start in the king's court mm-hmm. and then they go to some other land mm-hmm. they either they go to jungle or they go to some unknown land and there all the social norms go up and down mm-hmm. but then something happens then all they, uh, come, back. they yeah. come back and they can come back to the court and the rule of the court and the social norm again it's almost like the censor board is going <laughs> <laughs> all the time censor board is a new name of uh, observant ties of the gaze <laughs> the public gaze all the time we had uh-huh. so uh, this this sense of structure this sense of having a, a complexity and then getting it resolved to certain kind of enlightenment that is what is dudumania that is uh, what aristotle is uh, saying that there has to be a after this complexity there has to be a peripetia mm-hmm. which is the reversal of the situation okay. that there is some situation king was uh, very good and there was something happening in the city and king is trying to solve it and then we suddenly get to know that king is the reason for all the uh, bad fate of the city like in edipus so uh, then with that peripetia there is this final dudimonia the reaching to the light that understanding the light dionysus is a god of uh, wine and uh, madness uh, 
and everything uncontrollable mm. and in all the plays the character eventually reach to the light which is sun god which is apollo mm. and apollo and dionysus are completely against each other mm. so in a festival of dionysus all the plays are eventually making you reach light to apollo mm. so even if you have come to this dionysus you actually praising apollo so the structure this the rising action structure is actually this rising action is not a rising action it is eventually to turn down to a path of light mm. so this pyramidal shape there is a straight line which is taking you through there is I, a telos at the I end i really have to kind of interrupt you here and say uh. that i really appreciate that getting to the light uh. you are considering that as a coming down to <laughs> because it's it's straight it's telos mm. Like a triangle, you are journeying from here, and apparently you are saying that you are going up, and then you are going down. The way a Shakespearean uh, play structure will be drawn, like mm -hmm. a pyramid, or a three-act structure will be drawn. Drawn, mm -hmm. but actually you are just taking a straight line. Your end is fixed. Huh. Your telos is fixed. Your tell you is completely a teleological narrative. Mm -hmm. There is no surprise. There is nothing. You know what will happen. When you start seeing a Bollywood film, you know what will happen. There may be many complexities in between, and the heroine may almost die or become something, or but you know that there has to be certain uh, endings. Very few films, of course, have uh, changed that, and those are quite path-breaking markers in the in any tradition has its own questions. So this. three act structure and this rising and falling action structure is not really the uh, structure it it's this straight line which is taking it forward yes. which very interestingly has been reformulated in absurd theater it's like a spiral it's the same story it's again and again repeating itself but never touching the same point whenever it's almost touching the same point it's missing that and it's making another circle i think i have seen something similar in um, Films of Mohsen Makhmalbaf and the other mm. people, and uh, so that roundabout structure. You know, the same thing is happening over and over again, but you are looking at it from different perspectives. Because there is another thing in the whole Central Asian uh, narrative. Central Asian narrative from the time of, um, uh, let's say, Arabian Nights mm. or Thousand One Arabian Nights. There is a huge tradition of stories within stories within stories. Mm. And also, you never forget this uh, Russian doll. One film that really comes into my mind is Suraj ka Saath Vaagora. Yeah, mm. I have seen that as a film, uh. but that's actually a theatre. Yeah, um, and then it is. Moon Rakesh. Ah, no, Suraj ka Saath Vaagora is uh, Dharmi Bharti. Dharmi Bharti. So I'm so sorry, mm. but mm. Uh, so and also it's like this Russian doll, this Matroshka, that one doll inside mm. another doll inside another doll inside another doll. It's continuously opening. That's that's also Rohan Pamuk. Yeah. If you read Oran Pamuk, Oran Pamuk is also this this Central Asian narrative, because the uh, for a very long time from seventh century because of the Islam, the representational aspect of the human being is uh, forbidden. Mm. So you cannot draw a realistic portrayal. So the moment this Western Venetian sixteenth century perspective realistic portrayal, if that is taken up. then with whether in the visual culture or in the uh, written culture the treatment of the narrative is completely different the purpose of the narrative is completely different and that's why there are always the representationality is slipped out by the presentational mode it it looks representational but it slips it looks representational but it slips it's like the manuscript print mm -hmm. so this segments this unrelated apparently unrelated unit switch connect with some kind of theological and theosophical uh, uh, understanding that's very interesting so this whole iran and also iran having a very long term shia uh, influences the persian language that also affected their uh, from the kashida the embroidery to the painting to they have completely developed in another way mm. that that's how the 
Sunni narratives and the Shia narratives I'm not not really uh, uh, knowledgeable about uh, absolutely not knowledgeable about the uh, Islamic uh, narratives but the I only have sensed that there are certain differences in storytelling in the Shia narratives and the Sunni narratives that of course I have to more academically indulge into it so this is not an observation that only you have mm -hmm. another thing is that I have been speaking to Sarnath Manerji who is a mm -hmm. graphic novelist uh, a good friend of mine Sarnath was also talking about how the West has actually taken the culture of uh, visual storytelling mm -hmm. and took it to a very straight linear format mm -hmm. whereas the format that has been used in picture books in Japan mm -hmm. and the story books with picture picture books in uh, the whole century it's, it's, it's a totally different thing mm -hmm. altogether so be it drama but this modernity of uh, West is also somehow constructed by that. All those Japanese prints have influenced Matis and Picasso and everybody at the time. Yeah, yeah. Van, Gogh, Van Gogh was very mm. hugely mm. influenced by it. So anyway, so let's say kind of um, come to the end of this discussion. We are actually, uh, if you keep on talking, yeah. we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll never finish. <laughs> we'll never finish. <laughs> so just one uh, end question to finish with. In terms of uh, structure and all, when you yourself create a storyline or do a script or say make a film or write a play, do you have a structure in mind and how far is that influenced by this three act thing or you want to so see this move beginning, up? middle end is very seductive. To have a beginning, to have a middle and to have an end, it's so comfortable. I, as a student of literature, uh, have read Iliad and Odyssey and Iliad and Odyssey starts in Mediases, it starts in the middle. Hmm. It, it, it doesn't start at the start. And even 9th century BC has been able to write literature like that. It starts in the middle and then it weaves the past stories as it progresses. And that's the most fantastic part. That there is a sense of progression in time, but you are weaving the history, weaving the past in this sense of progression, mm -hmm. which we often forget, which we often, in our understanding of history, in our understanding of politics, in our understanding of society, we always think that time in a a linear, linear unidirectional vector, much like the 19th century uh, Europe. But it's not like that. The, the uh, forward always weaves the backward along with the street. The more you go forward, you weave more stories from the back. Isn't that like life in the sense that we are also like that? Yeah, yeah. It's Human not being that perceives time like that. Mm. That, that whole enlightenment project is over. It, it's a mistake of a century. Mm. Like you were talking about Iliad and Odyssey, can you cite a couple of modern examples which comes into your mind if somebody wants to see how uh, a story that really doesn't progress in the standard format? Some of the most fantastic examples are from the uh, magic realist uh, texts. Uh, but. Uh, mm. Mm, mm. Umberto Eco for that matter, Umberto Eco much later uh, mm. than after the Latin American uh, magic realist movement. This name of the rose or uh, Foucault's pendulum. Mm. That's Foucault's pendulum happens today. It's happening now. But it continuously is referring back to thousand years of history. There is a map which is cut into six parts, that is the map to reach to the center of the world and if you can put all the six parts, you can reach to the center of the world and if you shift a small pebble there, you can change the sea from there to there. You are the owner of the uh, world. So, there are five parts have been found but the sixth part is somewhere lost and you need the sixth part. And everybody in the world is looking for the sixth part. And then, Echo says that even there is a line in the... Um, uh, King Lear, that the king of the dark chamber is a gentleman. Mm -hmm. So Shakespeare also was looking for this sixth part. And he says that uh, Hitler, he was killing Jews. And you could just kill Jews. You could shoot them. Why you have to take them to a gas chamber, take their clothes off, you have to open the seams of their clothes, you have to take the golden teeth out of their uh, mouth. 
it, for killing you don't need to do so elaborate things. He was actually looking for the sixth part of the map. So yeah, <laughs> then, yeah. Because <laughs> I remember it was <laughs> it's completely oh, hilarious. And <laughs> after a point you really start believing that <laughs> maybe <laughs> there is some, <laughs> some reason. Maybe not this reason, but some reason for doing such elaborate so murder. <laughs> Coming to Umberto Eco, he wrote those uh, short pieces and mm. then I have a, I had a book uh, once, I think mm. I gave it to someone. And it never came back, never it never comes back. back. But that book had uh, very interesting things like say a radio conversation yeah. on uh, man's first landing to the yeah, moon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I remember. So, so this is not the place to say kind of discuss this. <laughs> That's another story, another day. <laughs> another day. So on that note, um, uh, uh, thanks Shantanu for Thank this. Thank you so uh, much. And uh, I would uh, really request you guys to uh, like and comment on my blog and uh, like this video and uh, kind of also go to my Facebook page so that you get updated about what I am doing and uh, thank you, there will be time. <laughs>